Hello there guys, my name is Lord Monkus and I was asked to make a video on how to get TurboGrafx CD games working in RetroArch. So I figured I would do a 3-in-1, Sega CD, PlayStation, TurboGrafx. Um, pretty simple. The biggest hangup most people have is BIOS files. The single most important thing to have is BIOS files that are properly named and proper versions. Without them, RetroArch is picky doesn't like it not gonna work so what you do this is a fresh install of RetroArch I have here I've done pretty much nothing to it I've made a few things just to get it set up for the video but other than that it's pretty much base install I've already placed my BIOS files in here this syscard 3 is the turbo graphics BIOS files these SCPH ones are the PlayStation BIOS files and these three here are the Sega CD BIOS files. The other thing you need, your games need to be Q and BIN. Q and ISO will work, Q and image will work, multiple BINs will work as long as the Q sheet is properly written for it, but that's not a big deal. Uh, as you can see all my games are Q and BIN. This is how 99% of my games are some are Q and image they work just fine some have multiple bin files like my version of Rayman's got like 50 bin files but it works because the Q sheet tells them to load them anyway I will include this file here RetroArch files I will include this in a mega link down below in here I have a bunch of BIOS files this is a patched version of syscard 3 that will bypass the boot screen but for the purposes of this video I'm just going to ignore it Anyway, so we go to RetroArch and we load her up. This is what we get. Now, already the Bednafem PSX core is loaded, but just to show you, all I've downloaded so far on this is just the Genesis core, the Bednafem PCE Fast core, and the Bednafem PSX core, just for these three systems. And the only other thing I've done is audio. I've just muted the audio because it'll also be too loud and you won't hear me speak while I show you the games working. I have done nothing for shaders so the games are going to look like crap. But again, I'll cover that in a video sometime in the future, probably. For now, though, you've seen where the BIOS files go, you've seen how they're named. Load core, we'll start with Genesis. Load content, select file. Go to wherever you got your files located. Pick your game. I'll start off with Android Assault. Great game. Now, right here, you make sure you load the Q sheet. If you try and load the bin, it'll just crash. See, that's the bin file. I don't want that one. I want this one. Click it. You'll get this screen. I thought I had muted sound. Anyway. There we go. Now it sounds muted. Press start. Game loads. I'll make it a bit bigger here. Simple as that. BIOS files. Most important thing. Correct name, correct version. RetroArch gets real picky with if you don't have them correctly named. Anyway, I'll load Turbo Graphics. Make sure the audio is muted. Okay, good. Uh, load content. Select file. Dracula X Ant. This is a cool version, actually. If you go to uh, MU Paradise, register on the forums, look around, you find this version of the game. It's English translated. Music is turned up a bit. Really great version of this game if you haven't played this game ever. It's got English subtitles, and hey, one of the best soundtracks ever with it turned up. Can't go wrong. Uh, again, these games look like crap without shaders, but I'll cover that in another video because that's shaders are a real personal preference kind of thing. Some people love the CRT scanline look, some people love just this raw look, other people like 
the smoothed out XBR shaders look. It's all personal. But as you can see though, games run. Now I'll show you a quick PlayStation. If I can do this right. Down here, Symphony of the Night. As you can see, I like Castlevania games. Too bad there's no Sega CD version. Now, of course, this is the PlayStation BIOS boot. There are ways to get past this, but again, I'll cover that in another video in the future. The whole point of this is just to show you that it works. And there is sound if I turned on sound, but I said I muted it for the purpose of this video or else it would be too loud. But the sound does work, trust me. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope it helped you out. Enjoy.